Chapter Two: The Thoracic Type, The Thriller. Individuals in whom the circulatory system, heart, arteries, and blood vessels, and the respiratory system, lungs, nose, and chest, are more highly developed than any other systems, have been named the thoracics. This name comes from the fact that the heart and lungs, which constitute the most important organs of these two closely allied systems, are housed in the thorax. That little room made by your ribs for the protection of these vital organs. Physical resilience, a general elasticity of structure, a suggestion of sinews and physical resilience characterize this type. The forehead face, high chest individual. What is known as a red face, when accompanied by a high chest, always signifies large thoracic tendencies. The high color, which in an adult comes and goes, is a sure indication of a well-developed circulatory system. Since high color is caused by the rapid pumping of blood to the tiny blood vessels of the face, people with little blood, weak hearts, or deficient circulation are not florid and must be much overheated or excited to show vivid color in their cheeks. Betray their feelings. On the other hand. The slightest displeasure, enjoyment, surprise, or exertion brings the blood rushing to the face and neck of him who has a large, well-developed blood system. How many times you have heard such a one say, "I am so embarrassed; I flush at every little thing. How I envy the rest of you who come in from a long walk, looking so cool." The man of great chest expansion. The largest part of this man's body is around the chest. See chest three. His chest is high for the reason that he has larger lungs than the average. Advantages of a high chest. The man of unusual chest expansion has one great physical asset. The person who breathes deeply has a decided advantage over the man who breathes deficiently. The lungs form the bellows. Or air supply for the body's engine, the heart, and with a deficient supply of air, the heart does deficient work. Efficient breathing is easy only to the man of large lungs, and only the high-chested have large lungs. Long-waist people, a long waist is another thoracic sign, for it is a natural result of the extra house room required by the large lungs and heart. It is easily detected in both men and women. See chart three. If you are a close observer, you have noticed that some people appear to have a waistline much lower than others. That the belt line dividing the upper part of the body from the lower is proportionately much nearer to the floor in some than in others of the same height. Passing of the warped waist, the straight up and down lines of today's woman. And the flimsy shoulder-to-heel garments she wears have obliterated her waistline, but you will recall how differently the old wolf's waist fashions of a score of years ago betray the secrets of the short and long waist. The eighteen-inch belt, of which we were so falsely proud in 1900, told a mystical fact about Milady's thoracic development. Belt versus suspenders. As the tell-tale belt disappeared from women's wardrobe, it appeared in men's, and now betrayed the location of his waist with an exactness of which the old-fashioned suspenders were never guilty. To test yourself, if you are a man and have difficulty in getting ready-made coats long enough for you, that is certain proof that you have decided thoracic tendencies. If you are a woman. Who has to forego many a pretty gown because it is not long enough in the waist? The same is true of you. In women, this long waist and high chest give the appearance of small hips and of shoulders a little broader than the average. In men, it gives that strict shoulder-like bearing, which makes this type of man admired and gazed after as he strides down the street. The pure thoracic head. A high head is a significant characteristic of the typical thoracics. 
see chart four the anglo-saxons tend to have this head and more than any other races exhibit thoracic qualities as racial characteristics this is considered the handsomest head known certainly it lends the appearance of nobility and intelligence it is not wide look at from the front or back but inclines to be slightly narrower for its height than the alimentive head the kite-shaped face a face widest through the cheekbones and tapering slightly up the sides of the forehead and downward to the jaw bones is the face of the pure thoracic see chart four this must not be mistaken for the pointed chin nor the pointed head, but is merely a sloping of the face upward and downward from the cheekbones, as a result of the unusual width of the nose section. See chart 4. His well-developed nose. The nose section is also high and wide because the typical thoracic has a nose that is well-developed. This is shown not only by its length but by its high bridge. The cause for the width and length of this section is obvious. The nose constitute the entrance and exit departments of the breathing system. Large lung capacity necessitate a large chamber for the intake and expulsion of air. Size of good lungs. Whenever you see a man whose face is wide through the cheekbones, with a long high bridge open nostril nose you see a man of good lung capacity and of quick physical energy when you see anyone with pinched nostril a face that is narrow through the cheekbones with a low or sway back nose you see a man whose lung capacity is deficient such a person invariably expands his physical energy more slowly Frickles being due to the same causes as wet hair and high color, are further indication of thoracic tendencies, though you may belong to this type with or without them. The typical thoracic hand. The pointed hand is the hand of the pure thoracic. See chart 4. Note the extreme length of the second finger and the pointed effect of this hand when all the fingers are laid together. Any person with a pointed hand such as this has good thoracic development, whether it occupies first space in his makeup or not. The fingers of the thoracic are also inclined to be more thin skinned than those of other types. One may be predominantly thoracic without these elements, but they are indication of the extreme thoracic type. Naturally, the hand of the extreme thoracic is more pink than the average. The beautiful foot. The thoracic tends to have more narrow, high-arched feet than other types. As a result, this type makes the majority of the beautifully short. The man of energetic movements. A hair chicken nimbleness goes with this type. He is always posed ready to strike. All thoracics use their hands, arms, wrists, limbs, and feet alertly and energetically. They open doors, handle implements, and all kinds of hand instruments with little blundering. Also, their movements are more graceful than those of other types. The thoracic walk. The springy step must have been invented to describe the walk of the thoracic. No matter how hurried, his walk has more grace than the walk of other types. He does not stumble, and it is seldom that a thoracic steps on the chain of his partner's groan. The Graceful Sitter The way you sit tells a great deal about your nature. One of the first secrets it betrays is whether you are by nature graceful or ungainly. The person who sits gracefully, who seems to drop himself becomingly upon a chair and to arise from it with ease, is usually a thoracic. The excess of energy sometimes gives them the appearance of fidgeting, but it is an easy, graceful fidget, and not as disturbing as that of other types. Keen eye and ear senses Quick eye and keen ears are characteristics of the thoracics. The millions of stimuli, the sounds, 
sights and smells impinging every waking moment upon the human consciousness affect him more quickly and more intensely than any other type the acuteness of all our senses depends to a far greater extent than we have hitherto supposed upon proper heart and lung action take long deep breaths for five minutes in the open air while walking rapidly enough to make your heart pound and see how much keener your senses are at the end of that time the thoracic is chronically in this condition because his heart and lungs are going at top speed habitually and naturally all his life susceptible to heat because bodily temperature varies according to the amount of blood and the rapidity of its circulation this type is always warmer than others he is extremely susceptible to heat suffers keenly in warm rooms or warm weather and wears fewer wraps in winter the majority of the buffer at the beaches in summer are largely of this type the high strung nerves as dull as a violin string due to his acute physical senses and his thin sensitive skin plus his instantaneous quickness make the thoracic what is known as high strung the most temperamental because he is keyed to high c by nature the thoracic has more of that quality called temperament than any other type the wreck who said that temperament was mostly temper might have reversed it and still have been right for temper is largely a matter of temperament since the thoracic have more temperament it follows naturally that they have more temper or rather that they show it oftener, just as they show their delightful qualities oftener. A continuous performance. This type, consciously and unconsciously, is a continuous performance. He is showing you something of himself every moment. And if you are interested in human nature, as your reading of this book suggests, you are going to find him a fascinating subject. He is expressing his feelings with more or less abandon all the time, and he is likely to express as many as a dozen different ones in as many moments. The quick temper, flying off the handle and going up in the air, are phrases originally inspired by our dear delightful friends, the thoracic. Other types do these more or less temperamental things, but they do not do that as frequently nor on as short notice as this type the human firefly a fairy nature is part and partial of the thoracic make-up but did you ever see a fairy nature man who didn't have lots of warm friends it is the grunge in whom the fire starts slowly and smoulders indefinitely that nobody likes but a man who flares up frame for a moment and is calm the next never lacks for companion or devotees the wet haired one may belong to the thoracic type whether his hair is blonde or brunette or any of the shades between but it is an interesting fact that most of the red haired are largely of this type he didn't have red hair for nothing is a famous phrase that has been applied to the red hair quick-tempered thoracic for generations you will be interested to note that this high color and high chest are distinctly noticeable in most of the red hair people you know certain proof that they approximate this type as you walk down the street tomorrow look at the people ahead of you and when you find a red hair notice how much more red his neck is than the necks of the people walking beside him this flush skin almost always accompanies red hair showing that most red-haired people belong to this type the flesh in the pan the red-haired man's temper usually expands itself instantly his red-hot fierceness is over in a moment but for every enemy he has two friends friends who like his flame even though in constant danger from it themselves whereas the alimentive avoids you if he disagree with you the thoracic likes to tell you in a few hot words just what he thinks of you, but the chances are that he will be so completely over it by lunchtime 
that he will invite you out with him. Desire for approbation. To be admired and a wee bit envied are desires dear to the heart of this type. Everybody, to a larger or lesser degree, desires these things, but to no other type do they mean so much to this one. We know this because no other type, in any such numbers, takes the trouble or makes the sacrifice necessary to bring them about. As indicate desires. The ego of every individual craves approval, but the majority of the other types crave something else more. The particular something in each case depending upon the type to which the individual belongs. You can always tell what any individual wants most by what he does. The man who thinks he wants a thing or wishes he wants it talks about getting it, envies those who has it and plans to start doing something about it. But the man who really wants a thing goes after it, sacrifices his leisure, his pleasures, and sometimes loves himself and gets it. Shines in public life. The limelight appeals more to this type than to others, because it goes further toward gratifying his desire for approbation. So while other men and women are dreaming of fame, the thoracic practice pulls and pleads his way to it. The personal agitation of friends and of the multitude is the breath of life to him. Extremes of this type consider no self-denial too great a price to pay for it. Many on the stage. The stage in all its forms is as natural a field to the thoracic as salesmanship is to the alimentive. The pleas of fond papas and fearsome murmurs are usually ineffective with this type of boy or girl when he sets his heart on a career before the footlights or in the movies. Whether they achieve it or not will depend on other and chiefly mental choice in each individual's make-up. But the yearning for it in some form is always there. So the manager's waiting rooms are always crowded with people of this type. It is this intensity of desire which has gold and inspired most stage artists on to success in their chosen fields. Put yourself in his place. To be able to put one's self in the role of another, to feel as his feel, to be so keenly sensitive to his situation and psychology that one almost becomes that person for the time being, is the heart and soul of acting. The thoracic has this sensitiveness naturally. After long study and acquaintance, you may be able to put yourself in the place of a few friends. The thoracic does this instantly and automatically. Tendency, not toe, makes fame. Those who have succeeded to fame in any given line are wont to proclaim hard work is the secret of success and to take great credit unto themselves for the labor they have expended on their own. It is true, of course, that all success until hard work, but the man or woman sufficiently gifted to rise to the heights gets from that gifts such a strong inward urge towards its expression that what he does in that direction is not work to him. The long hours, concentration, and study devoted to it are more pleasurable than painful to him. He chooses such activities voluntarily. Nature the Real Artist Nothing can rightly be called work which one does out of sheer preference. Work never made an actress and work never made a singer, where innate talent for this art was lacking. Nature the true maker of every famous name, bestow ninety percent, and man, if he hustle, can provide the other very necessary ten. But his sense of humor, is not his sense of justice, should be sufficient to prevent his trying to rob the Almighty of his due. Success for all. Every individual who is not feeble-minded can be a success at some time in this big world. Every normal-minded individual is able to create, invent, improve, organize, build or market some of the myriad of things the world is crying for. 
but he will succeed at only those things in which his physiological and psychological mechanism perform their function easily and naturally why we work man is by inclination very little of a worker he is first a wanter a bundle of instincts second a filler a hustle of emotions last and least he is a thinker what will work he does is done not because he likes it but because it serves one of these first two bundles of instincts when the desire for leisure is stronger than the other urges leisure wins but in all ambitious men and women the desire for other things outweighs the leisure urge ambition and type now what is it that caused some to have ambition and others to lack it your ambitions take the form determined by your predominant thing physiological system for instance in every great singer the thoracic has been present either as the first or second element the effect of the physical upon our talents is no more marked anywhere than here for it is his unusual lung power his high chest the sounding box in his nose session and his superior vocal cords that makes the real foundation of every singer's fame these physiological conditions are found in extreme degree only in persons of thoracic tendencies it was the great lung power of caruso that made him a great singer it was his remarkable heart power that brought him through an illness in february nineteen twenty one when every newspaper in the world carried on its front page the positive statement that he could not live another day that he lived for six months afterwards was due chiefly to his remarkable heart the nature resulting from a large heart and large lungs is one distinctly different from all others in short the thoracic nature the best dressed the best dressed man and the best dressed woman in your town belong predominantly to this type this is no accident the thoracic being possessed of acute eye senses are more sensitive to color and light than any other type these are the foundation of style and artistic grooming clothes can unmake the man being desirous of the approval of others and realizing that though clothes do not make the man they can unmake him this type looks to his laurel on this point because clothes determine the fresh impression we made upon strangers and because that impression is difficult to change clothes are of vast importance in this maze of human relationships the thoracic is more sensitive to the attitude of other because that attitude is more vital to his self-expression he senses from childhood the bearing that clothes have for or against him in the opinion of others and how they can aid him to express his personality the glass of fashion the thoracic therefore often become the glass of fashion and the mode of form his consciousness of himself is so keen that even when alone he prefers those things in dress which are at once fine fancy and fashionable some types are indifferent to clothes some ignorant of clothes and some deviant in their clothes but the thoracic always have the keen sense of fitness in the matter of apparel distinction in dress the distinctive dresser is one who essays the extremely fashionable the last moment touch he is always a step or two ahead of the times his ties handbags handkerchiefs and stick pins are up to the minute such a man or woman invariably has a large thoracic development and is well repaid by the public for his pains just the universal language the public looks more eagerly than we suppose to changes in styles and facts it gives in spite of itself instantaneous admiration of a sort to those who follow the dictates of fashion this being one of the quickest road to adulation it is often utilized by this type the newest in hair dressing the latest thing in croppers is always known by the thoracic woman and because she is more often than any other type a beautiful woman 
she can wear her hair in almost any style and find it becoming. So when puffs were the thing, this type of woman not only wore puffs, but the most extreme and numerous puffs. When the sticking to the face style was in work, she bought much bandoline and essayed the slickest and shiniest hair of all. When the ear bun raged, she changed those same paper-like curves overnight into veritable young sofa cushions. Always on dress parade, with intent to keep the spotlight on himself, the thoracic is always on dress parade. He is vividly aware of himself. He knows what kind of picture he is making. He is seldom self-conscious in the sense of being timid. When he does happen to be timid, he suffers. By reason of his greater desire for approval, more acutely than any other type. Affectability, his key note. Instantaneous reaction to stimuli, with all the reflex action resulting therefrom, constitute the key note of this type. This makes an individual who is physiologically and psychologically affectable. Because life is full of all kinds of stimuli, acting during every waking moment upon every sense in the organism, any person who is high strung finds himself in the midst of what might be called nerve bedlam. Gets the most out of everything. Because of this same highly sensitized makeup, the thoracic get more sensations out of every incident than the rest of us do. He experiences more joy in the space of a lifetime, but also more disappointment. The human violin, for the same reason that violin vibrates to a greater number of sounds than the organ, the thoracic is a more vibrant individual than others. He is impelled to an expressiveness of voice, manner, and action that often looks like pretense to less impulsive people. In other types, it would be. But to the thoracic, it is so natural and normal that he is often much surprised to hear that he has the reputation of being affected. A reputation for flightiness, this lightning-like liveliness of face, body, and voice, his quick replies and instantaneous reaction to everything also cause him to be called flighty. The quick thinker, we are prone to judge everyone by ourselves. People whose mental or physical senses are less keyed up, less sensitive, call the thoracic rattle brain. Usually such a man's brain is not rattled at all. It is working, as all brains do in response to the message wishing it, while the telegraph wire of the five senses. In the thoracic, these wires happen to be more dulled than in other types. He gets sensation from sight, sounds, tastes, touches, and smells much more quickly than the rest of us do. These messages are sent to the brain more rapidly, and since sensation is responsible for much of our thinking, this man's brain thinks a little more speedily than that of other types. It does not necessarily think any better. Often it does need slowing down, but compared to the thought power of some of the other type, the thoracic speed made up for much of his carelessness. He makes more mistakes in judgment than other types, but can write about face so quickly he usually reminds them while other types are still trying to decide when to start. To hold himself back is the hardest lesson for this type to learn. His changeability. This tendency to let himself go brings the thoracic a great deal of unhappiness and failure. He plunged so quickly that he often fails to take into consideration the various elements of the situation. His physical senses tell him a thing should be done and rush him headlong into action that he knows are ill-advised the moment he has time to think them over. In turning around and writing his mistakes, he often hears himself called changeable and vacillating. His batting average. In this, as in other things, we have a tendency towards smugglers, short-sightedness, and egoism. The man who makes but one mistake a year because he makes but two decisions is wrong 50% of the time. Yet he self-satisfiedly considers himself superior to the thoracic 
because he has caught the latter in six poor deals within six months at a rate the average thoracic as this would be about one mistake in a thousand a much better betting average than the other man's but because the confidence of others in our stability is of prime importance to us all this type or any one inclined to definite thoracic tendency should take pains to prevent this impression from settling into the minds of his friends should get on to the highway the greatest reason for striving towards stability in action and more slowness in decision however is for his own future's sake the man who is constantly making decisions and being compelled to alter them gets nowhere he may have the best engine and the finest car in the world but if he runs first down this by path and then that he will make little progress on the main highway should have an aim an aim a definite goal is essential to the progress of any individual it should be made with care and in keeping with one's personality talents training education environment and experience and having been made should be adhered to with the determination which does not permit little things to interfere with it end of section five of chapter two section six of chapter two eliminating non-essentials the big problem of individual success is the problem of eliminating non-essentials of hurrying to the line letting the chips fall where they may most of the things that steal your time strength money and energy are nothing but chips if you pay too much attention to them you will never heal out anything worth while no vain regrets if you are thoracic don't regret the fact that you are not a one decision a year man but try to make fewer and better decisions your quickness if called into counsel will enable you to see from what instincts your mistake habitually arise and the direction in which most of them have pointed and you will see this with so much greater dispatch than the average person that you will lose little time you should begin today to analyze your most common error in judgment that you may guard against their recurrence always slightly thrilled even when apparently composed the thoracic is always a wee bit thrilled everything he sees hears touches tastes or smells give him such keen sensation that he lives momentarily in some kind of adventure he languishes in an unchanging environment and find monotony almost unbearable lights and shadows never two minutes the same fitly describe this type he passes rapidly from one vivid sensation to another and expresses each one so completely that he is soon ready for the next he has fewer complexes than any other type because he does not inhibit as much the uncorked bottle the lid is always of the thoracic this being the case he suffers little from mental congestion though he sometimes pay a high price for his self-expression everybody is interesting most of us are much more interesting than the world suspects but the world is not made up of mind readers we keep our most interesting thoughts the most interesting sides of ourselves hidden away even your dearest friends are seldom given a peep into the actual you and this despite the fact that we all recognize this as a deficiency in others we bottle up ourselves and defy the world's corkscrews all save the thoracic he allows his associates to see much of what is passing in his mind all the time because we are all interested in the will individual and not in mass this type is usually much sought after no secretive the thoracic does not by preference cover up he does not by preference secret he does not except when necessary keep his pen and ways dark he is likely to tell not only his family but his nearest acquaintance just what he is planning to do and how he expects to do it the naturally secretive person who regularly refers to a certain party when he has occasion to speak of another is the exact opposite of this type his human interest 
we are all interested in the little comings and goings of our friends. Upon this fact, every magazine and newspaper builds its human interest stories. We may be indifferent to what the President of the United States is doing about international relations, but what he had for breakfast is mightily interesting. Few people read in ogled addresses, significant though they often are to the world and to the reader himself. But if the President would write ten volumes on just how I spend my Sundays, it would be a bestseller. Naturally confidential, personal experiences. Personal secrets and personal preference are subjects we are all interested in. These are the very things in which the thoracic regales his friends and about which he is more frank and outspoken than any other type. He makes many friends by his obvious openness and his capacity for seeing the interesting details which others overlook. Charming conversational list. Colorful vivid words and phrases come easily to the tongue of this type. For he sees the unusual, the fascinating in everything. Since any one can make a thing interesting to others if he is really interested in it himself, the thoracic makes others see and feel what he describes. He is therefore known as the most charming conversationalist. Beautiful voice, the most beautiful voice belongs to people who are largely of this type. This is due, as we have said before, to physiological causes. The high chest, sensitive vocal cords, capacious sounding boards in the nose and roof of the mouth all tend to give the voice of the thoracic many nonsense and accents never found in other types. His pleasing voice, plus his vividness of his expressions, and his lack of reticence in giving the intimate and interesting details, are other traits which help to make the thoracic a lively companion. The lure of spontaneity. The most beloved people in the world are the spontaneous. We lead such drab lives ourselves and keep back so much. We like to see a little Niagara of human emotion occasionally. The thoracic feels everything keenly. Life's experience makes vivid record on the sensitive page of his mind. He puts them on the rectora that is himself and proceeds to run them off for your entertainment. Sometimes a bubbler. A constant stream of talk must have been first set in describing this type, for while others are carefully guarding their real feeling and force, the thoracic goes merrily on relieving himself of this. More sedate and sombre types call the thoracic bubbler or spouters, just for this reason. The insensate talker, that person's talk gets on my nerves, is a remark often made by one of the state stiff type. Concerning the seldom silent, extremely florid individual, so natural is this to the thoracic that he is entirely unconscious of the wearing effect he has on other people. A sense of humor, seeing the funny side of everything, is a capacity which comes more naturally to this type than to others. This is due to the psychological fact that nothing is truly humorous save what is slightly out of plumb. Real humor lies in detecting and describing that intangible quirk. No type has the sensitiveness essential to this in any such degree as the thoracic. Individuals of other types sometimes possess a keen sense of humor. This trait is not confined to the thoracic, but it is a significant fact that almost every humorist of note has had this type as the first or second element in his makeup. The human fireworks. He is a skyrocket, or she is a firefly. Are phrases often used to describe that vivacious individual, whose adeptness as we party puts the rest of the crowd in the background. These people are always largely or purely thoracic. They never belong predominantly to the fourth type. The next time you find such a person, note how his eyes flash. How his color comes and goes, and the many indescribable gradation of voice which make him the center of things. He is always shooting sparks," said a man recently in describing a florid, high-chested friend. Never dull comely. His line may not interest you, but the thoracic himself is usually interesting. He is an actual curiosity to the quiet, inexpressive people, who never can fathom how he managed to talk so frankly and so fast. Such a person is seldom dull. 
He is everything from a condiment to a cocktail, and has the same effect on the average group of more or less drabbed personalities. Lives in the highs and depths. Glad one moment and sad the next is the way the ticker would read if it could make a record of the inner feelings of the average thoracic. These feelings often come and go without his having the least notion of what causes them. Ordinarily, these unaccountable moods are due to sensations reaching his subconscious mind, of which no cognizance is taken by his conscious processes. Called intuitive, this ability to get things, to respond quickly with his physical reaction while devoting his mental ones to something else, has obtained for this type the reputation of processes more intuition than others. Sources of hunches. That there is no such thing as intuition in the old sense of getting a hunch from the outside is now agreed by psychologists. The thing we have called intuition, they maintain, is not due to irregular or supernatural causes, but to our own normal natural mental processes. The impression that he gets this knowledge or suspicion from the outside is due, the scientists say, to the fact that his thinking has proceeded at such lightning like speed that he was unable to watch the wheels go round. The only thing of which he is conscious is the final result or sum at the bottom of the column called his hunch. He is not aware of the addition and subtraction which his mind went through to get it for him. Easily excited. Off like a shot is a term often applied to the thoracic. He is the most easily excited of all types, but also the most easily calmed. He recovers from every mood more quickly and more completely than other types. Under the influence of emotion, he often does things for which he is sorry immediately afterward. On the spur of the moment, this type usually does a thing quickly or not at all. He is a gun that is always cocked. So he hits a great many things in the course of a lifetime, and leads the most exciting existence of any type. Being able to get thrills out of the most commonplace event because of seeing elements in it which others overlook, he finds in everyday life more novelty than others ever see. The adventurers, romance and adventure always interest this type. He lives for thrills and novel reactions, and usually spares no pain or money to get them. A very slangly but very expressive term used frequently by these people is, "I got a real kick out of that." This craving for adventure, suspense, and jest usually lures this type into speculation, gambling, and various games of chance. The danger in flying, deep sea diving, auto racing, and similar thrills have a strong appeal for this type. So strong that practically every man or woman who follows these professions is of this type. Ties of sameness. The thoracic soon ties of the same suit, the same gown, the same house, the same town, and even the same girl. He wrings the utmost out of each experience so quickly and so completely that he is forever on the lookout for new worlds to conquer. Past experiences are to him as so many lemons out of which he has taken all the juice. He anticipates those of the future as so many more to be utilized in the same way. Like responsive people, we all like answers. We want to be assured that what you have said or done has registered. The thoracic is always saying or doing something and can't understand why other people are so unresponsive. He is as responsive as a radio wire. Everything hits the mark with him, and he lets you know it. So naturally, he enjoys the same from others, and considers those less expressive than himself stiff, formal, or dull. The kind of person the thoracic likes best is one sufficiently like himself to nod, smile, and show that he fully understands, but who will not interrupt his stream of talk. People he dislikes. The stolid, indifferent, or cold are people the thoracic comes very near disliking. The evident self-complacency and immobility are things he does not understand at all, and with which he has little patience. Such people seem to him to be cold, unfeeling, almost dead. So he steers clear of them. It was surely a thoracic who first called these people sticks, but the reason for their acting like sticks will be apparent in another chapter. His pet aversions, 
whereas the alimentive avoid people he does not care for the thoracic is inclined to betray his aversions he occasionally delights to put people he dislikes at a disadvantage by his wit or satire the stony individual who walks through life like an alien pillar is a complete mystery to the thoracic and the pillar returns the compliment we do not like anything we do not understand and we seldom understand anything that differs decidedly from ourselves thus we distrust and dislike foreigners and to a greater or lesser extent other families people from other sections of the country etc the easterner and westerner has a natural distrust of each other and the civil war is not the only reason for the incompatibility of southerners and northerners so it is with individuals those who differ too widely in type never understand each other they have too little of the chief thing that builds friendships emotions in common the forgiving man if you have once been a real friend of the thoracic and a quarrel comes between you he may be ever so bitter and biting in the moment of its anger but in most cases he will forgive you eventually really forget disagreements it is not as easy for other types to forgive they often refrain from attempting a reconciliation but the thoracic's forgiveness is not only spontaneous but genuine the alimentive bear no grudges because it is too much trouble the thoracic finds it hard to maintain a grudge because he gets over it just as he gets over everything else his anger oozes away or he wakes up some fine morning and finds like the boy recovering from the chicken balls that he simply hasn't it any more diseases he is most susceptible to acute diseases are the ones chiefly affecting this type everything in his organism tends to suddenness and not to sameness just as he is inclined to get into and out of psychological experiences quickly so he is inclined to sudden illnesses and to sudden recuperations a thoracic seldom has any kind of chronic ailment if he acquires a superabundance of aquapedupus he is in danger of apoplexy the combination of extreme thoracic and extreme alimentive tendencies is the cause of this disease likes fancy foods variety and novelty in food are much enjoyed by this type the alimentive like loss of rich food but he is not so desirous of various or freak dishes but the thoracic specialize in them you cannot mention any kind of strange new dish whose investigation won't appeal to someone in the crowd and that person is always somewhat thoracic it gives him another promise of nearness foreign dishes of all kind depend for the introduction into this country almost entirely upon these foreign patrons according to the statements of restaurants this type says i will try anything once many course dinners if the food is good are especially popular with them the trimmings at dinner out of the ordinary surroundings in which to dine are always welcome to this type the hangings pictures and furniture mean much to him most people like music and meals but to the thoracic it is almost indispensable he is so alive in every nerve so keyed up and has such intense capacity for enjoyment of many things simultaneously that he demands more than other types an attentive waiter who ministers to every movement and anticipates every wish is also a favorite with the thoracic when out for dinner sensitive to his surroundings colorful surroundings are more necessary to the thoracic than to other types the ever-changing fashion in house decorations are welcome innovations to him he soon grows tired of a thing regardless of how much he like it to begin with take notice amongst your friends and you will see that the girl who changes the furniture all around every few weeks is invariably of this type it makes me feel that i have changed my location and takes the place of a trip explained one girl not long ago wants something different the exact color of hangings wallpaper interior decorations and accessories are matter of vital importance to this type whereas the alimentive demand comfort the thoracic asks for something different something that catches and holds the eyes that make an instantaneous impression upon the onlooker and gives him one more thing by which to remember the personality of the one who lives there 
this type considers his room and home as part of himself and takes the pains with them which he bestows upon his clothes when he is rich wealth to the thoracic means unlimited opportunity for achieving the unusual in everything his tastes are more extravagant than those of other types uncommon works of art are usually found in the homes of this type the most extraordinary things from the most extraordinary places are a special preference with him he carries out his desire for attention here as in everything else and what he buys will serve that end directly or indirectly fashion and flair flair aptly describes the quality with the pure thoracic design in all that touches him and his personality it must have worth and go and distinctiveness it must be the latest and the fame he is the last type of all to submit to wearing last year's suit, singing last year's songs, or driving is a last year's model. Like Stash The thoracic wants everything he wears, drives, lives in, or owns to get across, to make an impression. The fat man loves comfort above all else, but the florid man loves distinction. He does not demand such easy-to-wear garments as the fat man. On the contrary, he will undergo extreme discomfort if it gives him a distinctive appearance he wants his house to be elegant the grounds different the will unusual has color sense whereas the fat man when furnishing a home devotes his attention to soft rest steam heat and plenty of cushioned divans the thoracic things of the chandeliers the unusual chairs the pretty front doorstep the landscape gardening and the color schemes when he is in moderate circumstances when only well-to-do, this type will be found to have carried out furnishing and decoration with the taste worthy of much larger purses. When merely well-to-do, he wears the very best coats he can possibly afford, and often a good deal better. This type does not purpose to be outwitted by life. He tries always to put up a good showing. When he is poor, the thoracic is seldom poor. He has so much personality, ginger, and gold of the sort that is required in the world of today that he usually has a good position. He may not like the position, but in spite of the fact that he finds it harder to tolerate disagreeable things than any other type, he will endure it, for he knows that the rewards he is after cannot be had by the down and outer. The natural and normal vanity of the thoracic stands him in hand here more than in almost any other place in life the world entertained by them behind every row of footlight you will find more people of this type than any other the alimentive manages the world but the thoracic entertains it he comprises more of the dancers actors operatic stars and general entertainers than any other two types combined in everything save acrobatics and oratory, he holds the platform laurels. As already pointed out, his adaptability, spontaneity, and love of approval are responsible for this. His fastidious habits. The thoracic is the most fastidious of all the types. His thin skin and sensitive nerves makes him more conscious of roughness and snowvaniness than others. The result is that he is what is called more particular about his person than of other types. The fat man often wears an old pair of shoes long past their usefulness, but the florid man thinks more of the impression he creates than of his own personal comfort, and will wear the shiniest of pattern leaders on the hottest day if they are the best match for his suit. Lies all music. Every kind of music is enjoyed by the pure thoracic because he experiences so many moods. Entertainment he prefers. Social affairs of an exclusive order where he wears his bad bit and tucker and everybody else does the same are amongst the favorable diversions of this type. He makes a favorable impression under such condition and is well aware of it. Other reasons for this preference are his brilliant conversational powers his charm and his enjoyment of other people and their viewpoints. The thoracic is also exceedingly fond of dancing, enjoys vaudeville. The average thoracic enjoys vaudeville, follies, and reverie, etc., because they are full of quick changes of program. He enjoys, as does every type, certain kinds of movies, 
but he constitutes no such percentage of the movie-going audience as some other types. Reading, books and stories that are romantic, adventurous, and different are the favorites of this type. Detective stories are often in high favor with him also. Physical assets. The physical advantages of this type are his quick energy, based on his wonderful breathing system, and the rich, rapid flowing blood, produced by his wonderful heart system. He is noted for his ability to get his second wind, and has remarkable capacity for rising to sudden physical emergencies. Physical liabilities, a tendency to overexcitement and the consequent running down of his factories, is a physical pitfall often fatal to this type. Favorite sports, hurdling, sprinting, tennis, and all sports requiring short, intense spurts of energy, are the ones in which this type excels. Social assets, charms, and responsiveness are the chief social assets of the thoracic. Inasmuch as these are the most variable of all social traits, he has a better natural start in human relationships than any other type. Social liabilities. Quick temper, his inflammable nature, and appearance of vanity are his greatest social liabilities. They stand between him and success many times. He must learn to control them if he decides to reap the full benefit of his remarkable assets. Emotional assets, instantaneous sympathy, and a lack of poisonous inhibitions are the outstanding emotion assets of this type. Emotional liabilities. Impatient micro emotions and the expenditure of too much of his electricity in every little experience are the tendency most to be guarded against. Business assets, that he is a good mixer and has the magnetism to interest and attract others, are his most valuable business traits. Business liabilities, an appearance of flightiness and his tendency to hop from one subject to another. Stand in the way of the thoracic's promotion many times. Domestic strength, the ability to entertain and please his own family, and to give of himself to them as freely as he gives himself to the world at large, is one of the most lovable thoracic traits. Domestic weakness, the temperament and temper of this type constitute a real domestic problem for those who live with them. But they are so forgiving themselves that it is almost impossible to hold anything against them. Should aim at, the thoracic should aim at making fewer decisions, at finishing what he starts, and of wasting less energy in unnecessary words and motions. Should avoid, all situations, conditions, and people who slip the belt off the wheel, who tend to cut life up into bits by dissipation or pleasure seeking. Should be avoided by this type because they arrogate his own weakness in that direction. Strong points, personal ambition, adaptability, and quick physical energy are the strongest points of the thoracic. Weakest points, too great excitability, irresponsibility, and supersensitiveness are the weakest points of this type. How to deal with this type socially? Give him aesthetic surroundings. Encourage him to talk. And respond to what he says. These are the certain methods for winning him in social intercourse. How to deal with this type in business? Get his name on the dotted line now, or don't expect it. If he is an employee, let him come into direct contact with people. Give his personality a chance to get business for you. Don't forget to praise him when deserved, and don't pin him down to routine. This type succeeds best in professions where his personal charm can be capitalized, and does not belong in any strictly commercial business. Remember, the chief distinguishing mark of the thoracic, in the order of their importance, are flushed complexion, high chest, and long waist. Any person who has this is largely of the thoracic type, no matter what other types might be included in his makeup. End of section six of chapter two.